Okay, sports fans, ladies and gentlemen, and other assorted waifs and strays, Dan here, JDOD.com, with my good friend, Dick Hirsch, formerly of Siemens Now, that's us, and yes. little fella on the, on the end there, we all know okay. John Reid, okay? Very special um, show today, not very often you see me in front of a camera like this, except when, yeah, anyway, whatever. But Dick has written something on SCN which is fascinating, um, kind of speculating in a sense about how the uh, success factors and SAP infrastructures may shape out. Go on, explain it. Mm -hmm. Explain it for everybody, Dick, because um, you're the only one that's actually done anything on this so far. Well, I mean, for me, what was fascinating was to look at success factors and see how, based on the existing um, architecture, or the planned architecture, cloud architecture, and SAP, how that all sort of fit together. Um, and it was fascinating because if you look at success factors, you'll see that it is... Um, it, it's, it's a SaaS. Um, and so the, the, the question was, SAP's current archi architecture is primarily um, a platform as a service. So if you try and bring these two together, how would it work? Um, and what was fascinating was to try and figure out whether the success factors SaaS architecture would fit into the uh, planned um, platform as a service. And it's difficult. Because if, if you look at why SAP, in my opinion, bought success factors, one of the reasons is that it has this experience. And if you have this experience in a SaaS environment, why would you sort of change everything to have it fit onto a planned platform as a service? So that was what I was, I was looking at. Um, and because we have to remember, success factors has had this architecture for quite a long time, very successful, but are they gonna wanna throw it away? I don't think so. So it's taken SAP forever to come up with a coherent platform as a service right. vision. And we're starting to see, it sort of makes sense a little bit, that right. ABAP as a service, Java as a service, Java platform right. services, we see all the lingo. Is success factors should just come in like a wrecking ball and, and, and change all that? Like what's gonna happen? Well, I, mean, I don't think it's, it's, it's gonna wreck it. I mean, and the one thing that SAP always says is that they want to bring the the two architectures together. Um, the question is, when is that going to happen? Um, it's not going to happen in the short term. It's not going to happen in the midterm. In the long term, you could see uh, a merging of the two. But the, the question is really, who's going to come out on top? Um, and that's something that's very difficult to tell because we have to remember that Lars is going to going to head the the cloud efforts from SAP. What does that mean? What are his expectations? Um, is his platform going to win? There was one quote from Lars that was a little bit shocking for me where he says, SB has all this great IP, let's put it on our platform. And I was like going, whoa, what does that mean? Ah, but Vishal Sikha said that, that success factors would plug in quite nicely to their platform. Right. So, and that's, whoa, who's that's, gonna win that? Exactly. That's well, the, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know who wins that and that's gonna be Vishal. Right. And, and I'm pretty certain that Lars is gonna come into this company and have, um, the, the, the kind word would be a steep learning curve. The reality is it's going to be a vertical climb. Because he's going to find, I think he's going to find, you confirm, Dick, I think he's going to find when he opens the box, goodness, we've got a ton of architectures here. This ain't just an architecture, there's a ton of architectures. And he's only used to dealing with one. Right, I mean, but we also have to remember <coughs> that he is successful. But he is successful in a niche product um, he hasn't had to dealt with um, this variety of applications or that SAP, complexity. right? Or the the developer ecosystem that SAP has to deal with, and that's if I have one critique on success factors, that it's they hide everything away. There is very little information in terms of what they're doing, and in terms of right. partners, you find nothing. There's no um, API dis um, description, nothing. For the vantage point of developer engagement, right. they don't have a lot to offer there as far as your investigation. Right, right, exactly. At the moment. Well, I mean, what I did, I mean, I I went back um, using the Wayback machine. This is a machine that takes snapshots of a, of a site. And I looked back, I didn't look at the whole site, but look at successfactors.com for the last, like, 10 years, mm. trying to find information. And I didn't find anything. Well, here's the interesting thing. I, I, I saw that observation. And if you look at the SaaS players like SFSF, Salesforce, Workday, uh, NetSuite, none of them, not one of them, gives you any real information 
right. about their platforms. Why? Because their platform is their IP at the right. end of the day, right? right? And it's a totally different model to the one that SAP has had in the past, which is very much about enabling an ecosystem right. based upon um, certain exposed APIs and, right. and other bits of code. You don't get to the source, right. and you don't need to, right? right? But with all these other companies, you don't get anywhere. You don't get enough. Well, you get some stuff, but you don't exactly get um, a huge amount of help from them. And, and, and right. I know that that's an impediment because I know uh, companies that are developing, for example, on the force.com platform, right. and they're 100% dependent upon what Salesforce is going to give them. Right. And, and, that, and that is both a blessing and a curse. So, you know, if Lars has followed the traditional SaaS route, then I think we're going to see him. I think he's, he, he's, I don't think he'll be shocked. I think he'll be challenged. Right. Because, I mean, I think that's, everyone says there are two cultures, um, the success factors culture and the SAP culture. Mm. But if you look at it just in, in terms of, <coughs> not the entire company, but in terms of their cloud efforts, there is a culture clash because you have um, a SaaS and you have a, a, a platform as a service model. And those are different mm. ways to look at the ecosystem and to look at how you develop applications. Uh, and, and I would argue that even now, um, SAP itself internally has some difficulty in actually articulating what it means when it talks cloud. Right. The gateway thing, it's, for example. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I talked to a, a well-known blogger who um, doesn't come to SAP shows much and his view of the platform as a service slide was gobbledygook. Like, to him it made no sense. Who was that? Um, Alex Williams. Yeah. And, and, to, and, and, uh, and to those of us who study this stuff, the iterations of it, it makes more sense because right. we've been studying it all along, but we have to remember that the outsiders, it's still got a lot of simplification and clarification needed for them to understand how right. developers would actually work on these platforms. Yeah, you know? but I mean, I think one good thing is that they've gotten rid of core and edge. I wanted to bring that up because we used to call you the edge guy. Now right. we can't. They blew they, it up. Why, yeah. why did they blow it up? Well, because I, I think they, the edge had a connotation that, that wasn't really appropriate. Edge was sort of um, perhaps unimportant, and I think that's not really a message that they wanted to, to send out. It's really all about platform versus Java platform. Right. That's the key. Right. Because if they were to plug success factors into Java, that would not feel like edge at all. That would be line right. of business. So. Okay, that was the, right. another thing because I mean, as Vishal always says, um, success factors fits into the the on demand architecture on the Java side, and it's a it's not an edge application like you said. So they already sort of noticed. Wait, we're going to have a problem here. Yeah, well, that's yeah. that's marketing, and it's a marketing fix, isn't it? In some yeah, senses. but I mean, if if you look at how the the market. Use SAP's cloud strategy. Mm. I mean, it's the it was non-existent, or it was weak, or it's confused. Yeah, fair point. Fair so, point. I mean, that's it's these changes are are important. All right, I'm not going to hold you to this, but what is your gut feeling of what's going to happen? Assuming SAP completes the acquisition, they merge these platforms. What do you think it's going to look like? Um, the first thing that's going to happen is that you will have um, the ABAP. I wouldn't call it the the core the, the ABAP platform as a service, the Java platform as a service, and the um, success factors applications will all exist in the same sort of on the same level. That's yeah. that's my that's that's midterm. Long term um, Well the, everything's up for grabs, isn't it? Because of Hana. Well I mean I mean for, for me it's it's more in terms of will success factors be able to move away because they're a in my in my opinion, in my research they're a, a JBoss mm. based um, SaaS. So are they going to be able to move that onto the Java platform as a service? Mm. That's definitely long term. But I think that's Vishal's goal, that they move there. Mm -hmm. so, so did you hear anything this week that makes you think differently from, uh, from what you said in, in that particular article and in, in your analysis of, of what these platforms look like and how mm -hmm. they may look? Nothing at all? Nothing at all. I mean, of course, okay. it's still the, the quiet time, so they can't discuss it. But I'm sure they're, they're uh, looking at this. And the one thing that's important for me is that um, I dislike when people say that SAP doesn't have any cloud DNA. Mm. Um, and this is something that they often say because it's just not the truth. They just um, don't have a lot of robust apps. No, I mean, it's not. I mean, if, if, you, you, if you look deeper and you look at um, what's been surfaced in terms of SAP research, what they're doing, for example, on the Java side or... Um, the cloud operations on the, the ABAP side, they do have good stuff. 
But for me, it's it's a problem of marketing, getting this information out, let people say we do have the experience. Mm. Um, well, I, I think if you were to ask SAP itself, they're not going to disagree with you. I mean, one of the things that SAP, I'm going to, I'm going to give credit to SAP for this because over this last year, they have fundamentally simplified the way in which they present to the public. Right. If you look at those architecture diagrams, for instance, they bear no relationship to what we would have seen two or three years right. ago where right. you know, the primary effort would be to put as many words on a slide as possible. Right. Right? Now it's as few words as possible, let's tell the story in pictures. Right. The story needs to be refined further, but I agree with you that in terms of public perception, and perception is reality, right. they've got to do a much better job. And right. it's, at this moment in time, you know, it's not worth speculating what it's going to look like because Dalgard will come in and he'll, he'll, he'll lead that charge, I would suspect. Right. I do think there's some value, though, in pointing out to those who are watching this video that SAP did go up on stage and publicly clarify a lot of the things you've been talking about around right. the disappearance of Core and Edge and this notion of these right. two platforms, ABAP and Java platforms, with, right. with HANA running underneath. Like they, When they go public and put that on stage, it right. does show that they have some. The only problem is that there's this thing coming in from the side, and we just don't know how that's going to impact everything. Right. It's going to be an exciting year, though, I think, yeah. don't you? Definitely. Definitely. Are you looking forward to it? Of course. I mean, because for me, the one thing that's going to be very interesting is to see how the Java side develops. Right. Um, because there was uh, a, a, a tweet chat today with the guys from Portal On Demand. Mm -hmm who are going to have um, an offering based on the Java stack. Right. On the, the Java platform. What was service. that again, sorry? Portal on oh, demand. Oh, portal, portal on demand, right, okay. Um, and they were describing some of their functions which they're going to offer exciting stuff. And I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff coming down the road which we'll hopefully be seeing in 2012 which are going to blow people away. And SP has to decide. I always tell them, you got a good story, you just got to tell it. You got to be, you got to be self-confident enough to take this stuff out. Dick, I want to leave it there because that's a great place to just, and like, you got something? Just to wrap. Right. My, my wrap is that SAP couldn't talk about success factors this week, but we did. <laughs> so you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's really good stuff, Dick. I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that you were prepared to come on for us. Thank you very of much course. indeed. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. You heard it here first, boys and girls.